In this section, we're going to deal with vector spaces. In fact, we've already been talking about vector spaces because when we talk about Rn or R2 or R3, those are all vector spaces, but now we're going to define them formally. So a vector space V, so V is just a generic term for any vector space, um, is non-empty. Non-empty simply means there's something in it, even if it just contains a zero vector. And there are two operations. One is vector addition, the other one is scalar multiplication. And the vector space must have the following properties. That the vectors in the space are commutative, they are associative, there is an additive identity. That means when I add the vector, which you see here written as E, to any vector, I get the vector back. So we know what that additive identity is. I'm going to call it E. It's simply the zero vector. So it's the vector that contains all zeros. For every vector V in the vector space, there is a W somewhere in the vector space such that W plus V is equal to zero. This is the additive inverse. And so we know that W, for this to be true, must be equal to minus V. Here are some properties when we're dealing with scalars. So in this case, alpha and beta are just any real number, so they're scalars. So there is an associativity with scalars. That is, I can multiply a vector by one scalar and then multiply that product by the vector alpha. Or I can multiply the scalars together first and then multiply them by the vector. There is a scalar identity, which is just the number 1. So if we multiply the number 1 by any vector, we get the vector back. And then there is kind of a distributive property over the sum of two scalars or over the sum of two vectors. Right? So if a, if a space has all of these properties, then we call it a vector space. So here are some examples of vector spaces. And again, some of these you already are familiar with. The set of all real numbers, for example, is a vector space. So any set of real numbers, oops, I think I may have gone to the wrong slide. There we go. So the set of real numbers is a vector space. Vectors in Rn, so that could be R2, R3, all of these are vector spaces, etc. The set of polynomials. Here we're going to call the polynomials a set called Pn. All right, so this Pn represents the set of all polynomials. So we can actually show that polynomials actually replicate Rn in the following way. Let's say that we have a second degree polynomial which I'm going to call P2, and it has a general representation as AX squared plus BX plus C. We can represent this polynomial as a vector, where the vector simply contains the coefficients of the polynomial A, B, and C. So notice this thing P2 looks like a vector in R3. So again, the set of polynomials is also a vector space. Later on, we'll deal further with this polynomial vector space. Additional examples of vector spaces include functions whose domain and range are real numbers, continuous functions of real numbers, differentiable functions of real numbers, And some Calculus 2 examples include convergent sequences and um, convergent series. Now let's talk about what a subspace of a vector space is. So actually, first of all, for a subset to be a subspace, right? subset means that it has to belong to the vector space. Right, so the first property is that it has to be non-empty, so it has, has something in it. It has to be a subset of the vector space. Then it is a subspace if the following is true, that it has the zero vector, that it is closed under addition. What that means is if I take any two vectors in H 
and I find their sum, it still belongs to H. And the last property is that it is closed under scalar multiplication. That is, if I take anything out of H and I multiply it by a scalar, I get something that is still in H. So let's look pictorially at what it means for something to be a subspace of a vector space V. So this larger outside ring that you see in black is our vector space V. And inside of it, we have H, which is our subspace. So first of all, notice that H is a subset of V. That means it's contained within V. So the other three properties are 0 has to be in there somewhere. So somewhere inside of here is the 0 vector. Then the other two properties say that if I take any vectors, let's say u is in there and the vector v is in there, and I find their sum, that u plus v must also lie somewhere within h. Okay, so it can't be outside of h, it must lie in h. Additionally, if I take some scalar, so scalar, the scalar is just any real number, so let's say we have a number k, and we multiply it by v, and we get some other vector, that that vector must also lie inside of h. So if I take the sum of, say, u and v, oops, something just happened here, sorry, I'm going to pause for a moment. All right, so what if I take the vectors u and v and I find their sum? So I'm going to take u and v, and the sum lies somewhere in here in v, that is inside the vector space, then this would mean that this is not a subspace of v. Again, for it to be a subspace, when I take the sum of two elements in h, they must belong to h. And if I take a scalar multiple of anything in h, it too must belong to h. Now we're going to do a series of proofs where we show that different subsets of a vector space are subspaces of the vector space. So this first one says, is the set that contains just the zero vector a subspace of Rn? So this actually seems a bit obvious, but to show that it's true, we have to show that those three properties are true. Again, that it contains a zero vector, which you see here, that if I take two elements in the set and add them together, I get something in the set. And lastly, if I take any scalar multiple times something in the set, I get something that also belongs to the set. So the first one is obvious. Since 0 is an element of the set that contains a 0 vector, remember we have to show that it contains a 0 vector, then the set contains 0. Again, this is kind of obvious, but we just want to go through all of the steps to make sure that we show that everything is true. So now it says if u and v belong to the set containing the zero vector, then so does u plus v. So if u is an element of the set containing zero, this means that u is equal to zero, right? Zero is the only thing in there. Likewise, v is equal to 0. So now let's find their sum. u plus v equal to 0 plus 0. Of course, if we add the 0 vector to itself, we get the 0 vector, which is an element of the set that contains the 0 vector. This implies that the set containing 0 is closed under addition. All right, so if I take any two elements in the set and I add them together, I get something in the set. Lastly, let k be a scalar and u belong to 0. So as we said before, if u belongs to 0, this implies that u is equal to, I mean, sorry, yeah, u is equal to 0. So now if we take k times u, I messed up just a little bit. So if we take k times u, then we get k times the 0 vector, which gives us the 0 vector, 
which is an element of the set that contains zero, which implies that the set is closed under scalar multiplication. Since we've shown that all three of these properties are true, this means that zero is a subspace of Rn. So here is another subspace proof, and that is we would like to show that Rn is a subspace of itself. So first, again, if it has the three properties that we mentioned, then it is. First, Rn is a subset of Rn. A subset belongs to the vector space, and certainly Rn belongs to Rn. Okay, does Rn contain the zero vector? Well, again, this is kind of obvious. So you say obviously zero belongs to Rn. So we're done with that one. Next, we'll show that if I take two vectors in Rn, then their sum belongs to Rn. And again, that sounds obvious, right? If I take two vectors in R3 and I add them together, I get a vector in R3. So the statement goes as follows. We let u and v be in Rn. Then we know that simply by the definition of vector addition, the sum of those two also belongs to Rn. Therefore, we can say that Rn is closed under scalar multiplication. Before we prove the last property, I just want to note that I made a error in the last statement. This should say close under vector addition, not close under scalar multiplication. Okay, so now the last statement is, again, to show that it's closed under scalar multiplication. So what does that mean? It means if I take any vector in Rn and I multiply it by a scalar, I end up with a vector in Rn. Right? So that's presented here. So we let k be a scalar and u be some arbitrary vector in Rn. Then by definition, if I do vector scalar multiplication, I get something that is in Rn. Therefore, Rn is closed under scalar multiplication. We now conclude our proof by indicating that since the three properties hold, then we know that Rn is a subspace of Rn. Now let's consider this proof that's a little less obvious. We're going to show that this set S, which you see here, is a subspace of R3. So notice that S is, contains vectors in R3 that have the following properties. x1 is equal to x2 and x1, x2, and x3 are real numbers. Certainly we see that S is a subset of R3. That is, that it is a vector that con it contains a set of vectors that have three elements. So the first thing that we need to do is show that 0 belongs to S. This is very simple because we can simply let x1 be equal to x2 be equal to x3, which we set to 0 then 0 is an S. Notice again, S is any set of vectors whose first two elements, that is x1 and x2, are the same, and x3 can be any value. We now need to show that S is closed under addition. So we need to take two vectors, or two arbitrary vectors in S. So let's say that one is u, where it has values little a, little a, big A. So little a and little a are the same. Big A can be any other value. And the vector v is little b, little b, big V. Again, the two first two elements are the same, and the last element is different. So if the sum belongs to S, then u plus v must have the structure that is demanded by S. And that is that the first two elements are the same, and the last element can be anything. So let's look at what u plus v is. It's little a, little a, big A, plus little b, little b, big B, which gives us little a plus b, little a plus b, big A plus big B. Notice that u plus v belongs to S because the first element and the second element are the same, and the last element is just any other value. We can therefore conclude that S is indeed closed under addition.
So here's the last thing that we have to show, and that is that S is closed under scalar multiplication. So let's K be a scalar and U be an arbitrary vector in S. Again, the only thing that S must contain are vectors that have the first two elements the same, the last element is anything. So now let's look at K times U. Notice that K times U is simply KA, K little a, K big A. So again, the first two elements are the same and the last element is just any value. So that too belongs to S. Hence, we conclude that S is closed under scalar multiplication. Since we've shown that S contains a zero vector, that it is closed under vector addition and closed under scalar multiplication, we can now conclude that S is a subspace of R3. For your reading assignment, I would like for you to write down the properties of a subspace. So, in other words, what is a subspace? Of a vector space V. After you do that, I would like for you to look at the following set. This set S contains vectors that are in R2, so it is a subset of R2, that have X and 1 as its elements, where X is an element of the real number, so it's any real value. The lower value is always 1. I want you to provide a convincing argument for why this particular subset does not contain any of the, um, of the properties that would make it a subspace. So, Again, write the properties of a subspace. What is it? And then I want you to show that S does not contain any of those properties. So S has none of the properties.